Let's start building the basic user authentication using sessions. I thought hard about this part because user authentication is not that easy to get it right when building from scratch. I personally prefer and recommend to use already established libraries or frameworks that offer user authentication out of the box because they are usually battle tested and well maintained and they have thought about the things that you may not think about when building things like user authentication from scratch. That being said though, for this project I decided that we're going to build a very basic and simple session based authentication. This way you will learn and understand how some of the authentication systems work behind the scenes when you take away all the obstruction. So as I said our implementation won't have fancy features and different session storage options like Redis, Memcached or Database. At least for now we'll use the native PHP sessions and its default file storage. Quick note that we covered both sessions and cookies in second section of the series briefly so if you need a refresher on that uh, please take a look at those videos as a prerequisite to this lesson. Links as always are in the description. So let's get started. First we want to decide what routes we want to protect because we want to redirect the user to the login page if they try to access the pages that they're not allowed to access without being logged in. So if we open the routes file, technically just need to protect the dashboard page and the logout action. Because these are the two actions that require a user to be authenticated. The login and the register routes don't really require a user to be authenticated. In fact, they actually require a user not to be authenticated. So we need to add some sort of protection to the dashboard route and the logout route. Just to point out, I created the login and logout routes behind the scenes and uh, they're just empty methods in the controller that we need to fill in. We're going to be filling in the login method here in this lesson. Alright, so the way we can protect our routes is by introducing a middleware that will intercept the request and check if the user is logged in and if the user is not logged in, it will redirect the user to either the login page or somewhere else. We can register the middlewares for specific routes. So we can basically add uh, the add method here right after the route and register the middleware for this specific route. We can register some auth middleware class or maybe requires auth middleware or something like that. Let's add the same thing to the logout action and then let's create this auth middleware class. We'll put this within the middleware namespace and this needs to implement the middleware interface. And within the process method, we need to check if the user is logged in. Now we can do that by checking some sort of flag within the session that indicates the user being logged in. We can store something like a user ID when the user logs in and then we can check in this middleware if that user is logged in by checking the session if the session contains the user ID. So we can do something like if the session does not contain the user flag or the user ID, then we can create a new response and redirect the user. Otherwise, we can simply continue handling the request. So to create a redirect response, we need a response factory interface. So let's inject that in here. And we'll do return this response factory, create response 302 with header location and we'll redirect to login. Now let's test this out to make sure that it actually works. So let's go to the browser. Let's try to change the URL to dashboard page. Let's visit that. And as you can see, we are redirected back to the login page. Great. So the next step now is to implement the login method on the auth controller. So let's write down the steps that we think that needs to happen within the login method in the controller. So first we want to validate the request data. Then we want to check the user credentials. Then we want to save the user ID in the session. And finally, redirect the user to the home page. Now that last part, we already have it taken care of right here. So we can get rid of that. So we just need to fill in these three steps. So for the first part to validate the request data, we can actually copy the validator part from the register method. So we can maybe copy these things right here and paste it here. And we're checking the requirement on the email and password. So let's get rid of these. And we're also checking if the given email is a valid email. Then we need to check if the user has entered the valid 
credentials. Now to do that, we need to run a query to get the user entity so that we can get the user's hashed password. We can use entity manager for that. So we can do something like user equals this entity manager get repository and we'll get the default user entity repository and we'll call find one by and pass the criteria where we'll check for the email equals data email then if the user is not found by the email we need to throw the exception and we can pass the error ourselves you have entered an invalid username or password now we also need to check if the user's password matches and we can check it within the same if conditional here. So we can do something like if user is not found or the password doesn't match using password verify function where we pass plain text password and compare it with the user's hashed password. Notice that I'm throwing a very generic error message here without being too specific. We don't want to give user too much information on whether their username was not found or their password didn't match and so on. That's why the error message is not being too specific. All right, so the next step is to save the user ID in session. And we can do that by simply doing session user equals user get ID because this user is the user entity. Now, before we test this out, we need to actually modify the login twig template and add some validation handling within our form. So first within the input, we'll put the old email value when the user is redirected back with errors so that we prefill the email for them. And then we can use the same thing that we did in the register template and add it in here. This will be email and we'll do the same thing for the password and we need to add the necessary divs so this will be for email and this will be for password all right so let's give this a try now let me close this out let's open the browser we know that we can submit an empty form because we have the basic client side validations so let's enter some wrong credentials here click login and we're getting an error undefined array key email did i forget to add the name to the login template uh yes i did so this needs to have name email and this needs to have name password let's try that out again submit the wrong credentials and sure enough we are redirected back with the proper error message and the email is pre-filled now i already have a user that i created in one of the previous videos so we'll just use the correct user and sure enough we are redirected to dashboard and that means that because we're not being redirected back to the login page the user is actually logged in let's inspect the element switch to the application tab and within the cookie section under local host we see that the session id cookie was created now you will know what the session ID is if you watch the sessions video, but whenever the session is started basically generates the session ID and then stores it in the cookie and then in every further request this session ID is used to look up the session within the server. If we delete this we're going to be logged out because then server doesn't know where to look for the sessions. If I refresh the page you see that we are redirected and we see that the new session ID was generated because we start the sessions within the middleware now let's authenticate ourselves again and keep an eye on this session id so it ends with ffc4 so let's log in here and as you can see we're logged in but the session id did not change it remained the same session id to ffc4 now that is a problem because it opens up our application to things like session hijacking and fixation attacks. If a hacker somehow gets a hold of the user's session ID, they can impersonate the authenticated user. Note that the session fixation and the session hijacking are not exactly the same thing. They do have the same goal though, which is to gain access to the user's session. The difference is actually in the process. Hijacking entails stealing the valid session ID by exploiting other vulnerabilities within the application. It can be done if the session IDs are maybe part of the request parameters instead of them being in the cookie header via man in the middle attack and so on. With the session fixation on the other hand, hacker attempts to have the user use the fake session ID that the hacker already has access to before the user logs in. So the hacker basically attempts to plant the session ID into the user's cookie and then whenever the user logs in, if the session ID 
does not change, then Hacker also gets authenticated because they are using the same session. Hacker can gain access to the user session and can manipulate the user's cookies through various techniques. For example, if the application has other vulnerabilities, the hacker can exploit those like cross-site scripting, also known as XSS, which we'll talk about in a separate lesson. Hacker may also just have temporary access to the user's browser and then can plant the session ID there that way and so on. So basically there are different ways of gaining access to the user's session ID or planting and fixating the user's session ID. There are a few things that we can do to protect against such attacks. One of course is to use secure connection like HTTPS to prevent man in the middle attacks which will help avoid session hijacking. We can also configure the cookie options to set the secure flag and set the HTTP only to ensure that cookies are not accessible via JavaScript. We can also implement protection against uh, cross-site scripting attacks, which will also be covered in a separate lesson. Another thing that we can and should do to protect against such attacks is to regenerate the session ID anytime there is a change in the user's authentication state. User logging in qualifies as an authentication state change, so therefore we should regenerate the session ID there. That would make the attacker's fake session ID useless because the user would be getting a new session ID whenever they would be logging in. We can use PHP session regenerate ID function to do that. So before we set the user's ID in the session, we can call the session regenerate ID function. Now let's try this out now. So I'm going to delete this again. We're logged out. The session was generated. So we have 40C1. Let's try to log in with the same credentials now. And as you can see, the session ID was regenerated. So let's talk about some of these cookie options that we see here, like HTTP only, secure, same site, and so on. The domain and the path basically define the scope of the cookie, like to which URLs the cookie should be sent to. Expires and max age is the lifetime of the cookie. Session here indicates that this is a session cookie and are usually expired or deleted whenever the browser session ends, like whenever the browser is closed. However, some browsers like Chromium-based browsers restore the sessions, which may seem confusing at first because if you close the browser and reopen it, you might think that it would be logged out, but you're not because uh, these browsers restore the sessions. HTTP only and secure, if enabled, ensure that cookies are sent over a secure connection only and can't be accessed by client-side scripts like JavaScript. So you can't access the cookies by using document cookie. So if we go to the console here and try to do document.cookie, we see that we can access the session ID this way. But if I enable the HTTP only and try to access it again, we see that it no longer returns the cookie. The other option that I want to talk about is the same site. This option basically lets us specify if and when the cookies should be sent with the cross-site requests. We can specify the value to be either strict, lax, or none. None means that cookies will be sent on both first-party and cross-site requests, while strict and lax are similar in the way they function. Strict means that cookie will be sent only if the request originates on the first party domain, meaning only for the requests that originate from the same site where the cookie was created. Like an email within Gmail, for example, if you get an email that contains the link to your site, if you click it, it won't include the cookie with the strict option because request did not originate on your site. Lux is a bit less restrictive where it allows the user to navigate to the site like clicking on a link from uh, within an email which would then include the cookies in the header. But it still prevents the cross-site requests whether it's to load images or frames. Now we can configure the session cookie options by using session set cookie params function. So let's head over to the PHP documentation to see how we can configure the cookie params. As stated here, we need to call the function before the session start is called. So in our case, that would be before session start within the middleware. Now this function has two signatures and we're going to use the second signature to pass the options in array format. 
We want to set the secure HTTP only and the same site options for now and you can read more about these options if you want to in this documentation. If you scroll down a little bit you'll see links to the documentation to each of those options. So we're going to go back to the code, open start session middleware and before the session start we'll call session set cookie params and we'll pass the secure to be true, HTTP only to be true, and same site to be lax. Let's open the browser, delete this cookie. Let's refresh the page, we're logged out. And as you can see, the new cookie for the new session ID that was generated now has HTTP only enabled, secure enabled, and same site set to lax. Let's try to log in and we see that it works as well. The session ID was regenerated while the other options remained the same. Now before we wrap up for today, notice how a logged in user is able to access the register and login pages. I can simply go to register page and we can access it and go to login page and I can access it as well. In the beginning I said that we want to restrict it and only guest user should be able to access login and register page. We can create a middleware similar to the auth middleware. So in fact we're going to simply duplicate this and call this guest middleware and we're just going to negate this check here to check if the user is not empty in the session which means the user is logged in. So if the user is logged in, we want to redirect the user to the dashboard instead of processing the login or register actions. So let's go back to the routes and let's add the middlewares here, call it guest middleware. And let's add the guest middleware to these four routes. Now if I go back to the page and refresh, we see that we are redirected back to the dashboard. If I try to go to register, we are redirected back to the dashboard. Let's uh, delete the cookie so we're logged out, refresh the page, and now we can access the login and register pages. All right, so later on, we're going to do some refactoring and move the session configuration into the config file and clean up our code a little bit. So don't worry if the code that we're writing now sort of starts to smell. Get used to it because smelly code will always be around and it's our job to fix it. Now we're just trying to get the authentication working properly. We can endure some code smells in the meantime. We'll do some refactoring later. So this is it for this video. We'll see how we can access the authenticated user object so that we can display the logged in user's name and build the logout functionality in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Please smash the like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I'll see you in the next one.